All right, so um, maybe let's do a very quick um, intro. Uh, maybe we will start with uh, Daryl. Daryl will be the second president of MAFA. Uh, and um, uh, basically, you know, I, I, I dumped all the problem on, <laughs> I caused the problems and then I dumped it on Daryl. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah, so hi, uh, my name is Daryl. Chum did not dump any problems on me. Um, he might say he did, but no, he actually helped a lot. Um, so I took over. So I was Chum's vice president, um, and then I took over um, after Chum the year between two thousand and. Yeah, here's the math. <laughs> okay. right, the math, right? One of those years, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, and um, so like, and and I, I'm a musician. I teach music. I'm I'm a psych graduate, and I work with special kids. Yeah. So yeah, but, um, Shah, why don't why don't you tell us about what you do? Hi guys. Uh, I'm Shabari. Um, I'm just recently being installed as the new president for Mafa, uh, for this new upcoming term. Uh, I am a uh, sports marketer. I work for a sports agency and advise sports and previously I uh, also practiced law before I jump into uh, sports business. Great, thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you, presidents, <laughs> for, for sharing. For those who are listening and when Daryl said chum, so I have two names or I have two lives. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 I forgot. No, it's okay. <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So like uh, some some of my friends knows me as a chum or on the field they call me mm. grandpa or they call me. <laughs> <laughs> it was all anyway. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, work wise, people call me uh, uh, Zairol. Uh, so but it's fine uh, either way uh, as long as they know it to me, it's fine. So actually, uh, I, I have some, you know, we have some uh, areas that we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, I think because the, the growth of an association or, or the growth of the sp specific sports always depend on, on the leaders. You know, what, what is it to them? Is it a, a place that, you know, for, for me just to, to grow certain things or is it for my own self-development? So what, what is MAFA to you guys? What, what, do, you, uh, what do you see MAFA as a precedent? Um, either Daryl or Shah, you go ahead. Uh, Shah, do you want to take this first, Shah? Just now, since I went first, now you went first, Shah. <laughs> yeah. We take this last, so let's see. Uh, please jump No first, problem, Shah. bro. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, what, what, um, what is MAFA to you as an individual? Uh, or as a president? Uh, for me, MAFA is a, it's a responsibility for me because uh, like uh, we just uh, talked just now, uh, I believe uh, CHAM has started uh, MAFA in the past few years. It was five or six years ago. So uh, <laughs> I think throughout all the, the generations are either under Cham and Daryl, I think everybody can see that uh, progress from time to time from, I believe back uh, during when Cham started all this, there was like uh, not, man, not enough, not many teams who, who, who are starting the, the, the sport in Malaysia. But now I think after a good work by you Cham and also Daryl, I'm uh, sort of following the footsteps to to continuously growing the sport. So I think that is a huge responsibility, and it's not something that uh, you know I'm taking it for granted. Awesome, thank you, thank you, Sam. Uh, there for me, oh, it's hard to follow after that. But yeah, uh, for me, <laughs> I think like um, after becoming like getting getting the presidency from Cham and. Um, really looking at what MAFA means to me. I think MAFA um, in general, when I, when I took over, it was, it was a sense of commitment to the community for me. Yeah, so it's a, it's a sense of commitment to the sport, to the community, to make sure that 
I give my best so that I can give the best for the sport. Sometimes it might not be what people think is the best. I would say, but you know, like 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 parents lah. Sometimes you got to do the hard work, and then after that, after a few years, it'd be like, oh, actually, can yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, you would know all about it, right? Like so after all, Mafa is like our our, our baby, child, yeah? our baby lah. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, for me, it was it was a commitment to the community and to the sport to see it grow, um, and basically work with the team that 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 I that I had to see it become. Bigger and better from, from all from from uh, all the years because I think that's what we need to do as presidents, you know, try to always get better and get bigger. Yeah. Yes, yes, very very true. Thank you guys so much for for How sharing. How about you, Chap? Um, well, Malfa for me is is actually the the love for the sport. Uh, I think even before Malfa, uh, there was a group of guys that was playing, and I think the the thing that made them Uh, play and they actually organize events and tournaments and it, it's just a group of people who just have the love for the sport. Um, I've been playing since I was 13 years old, so I was blessed with the opportunity to. So about so about five years and you know you've been playing. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> no lah, about 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, so so it, and it it just becomes part of your blood, and I I really want to. To see the sport grow, and until an opportunity for my children and your children uh, coming soon to also play the the sport we, we all love. I mean, <laughs> it's really uh, starting from the grassroots, really starting from zero, and you know, is something that we could not rush, uh, and is something that uh, I agree with what both of you guys are saying about. It's really uh, about the community. Um, it's really, I mean, it is. Yes, it is the sport that, but then it is also the, the atmosphere that comes with the community. Uh, I know a lot of people that join the sport. It is because of the people that they play with, um, regardless of, of gender, regardless of age, regardless of what their occupation is or their background. Uh, when they come in, um, they feel like they have tremendous support. Uh, I, I've had some people who are non-local who join, and they said that the reason why I join is because I am just one another person. I'm just another player. I'm not segregated by uh, race, by age, by whatever it is. I'm just another player, and and most of us don't even know. I I mean I know Daryl for quite some time, so I I know what he does, and I only just before this webinar started, I, I saw what he was doing so, <laughs> for a living. You know? So we all know each other as player and from which team, um, and and you know what we play, what position we play. We only know each other on, on the field, and I think that is a strong community. Um, you know that people just appreciate people who who or who they are, um, and regardless of whatever their background is. I think that is one of the beauty behind uh, the community that we have here. And and what you guys have built and continuously building, inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> uh, okay. So so let let me ask you uh, because basically uh, I cannot say that I was the first president and and that I started the association. Uh, Daryl was was uh, uh, with me along the way. We were working together and along with uh, a group of uh, committee members and. So there's a lot of experience and a lot of trial and error. So uh, I know Daryl and myself, we we are the past. Um, if we are to run another NGO, should we run it? Uh, you know, if we run another association, should we run it like an NGO or should we run it like a business? What What, what do you guys think? Uh, for me, like when I when I took over Mafa, I. I always thought of running it like a business. Okay. Yeah. So even right now, if 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 I were to do, if I were to run another association, I would like to run it like a business. But what I've learned is that because it is an association, you cannot fully run it like a business, because there is the community, there are people, there are basically. Um, you you have to listen to the inputs 
of of the others. You cannot be like, no, this is the, this is my way or the highway, right? Because a lot of businesses, um, would be like, okay, this is my way or the highway sometimes. So I would say, I came into Mafa looking at it as a business, like looking at running it like a business because I feel like, you know, sometimes some things need need to be put on, but throughout the years. I realized that you have to kind of balance the business and the people side of things. So if I were to do it again, I would try to kind of meet somewhere in the middle. I know it's not the best answer, but yeah, a bit more like a business, but still care about how, but still take in more input about what the people want and how can we help the people. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Daryl. I think I think I, I agree with uh, what Daryl just said. Um, for sports to work, we have to to treat it like a, a, in a professional way. That's that's in in a way I agree with Daryl when he talks about uh, running an association as as a, a like a business, not not as a business entity per se. Because when it comes about sports in Malaysia, there is this. Uh, sort of ideology where uh, it is very, th there is a very traditional uh, setup when it comes to sports in Malaysia and when, when, you know, you have to have uh, go through district, states and whatnot. But uh, regardless of that, I think what we are striving forward is, is something that's very flexible, something that uh, at the end of the day, we can uh, reach our goal as a as a sports association as a national sports association yeah <laughs> if you don't mind me just adding a bit jump so yeah, go ahead. um so like i went like i saw mafa as okay let's run it like a hard knock kind of business thing and then halfway through i realized that okay you can't do that per se because there there are people who maybe don't see your point of view and maybe people who don't who don't um, who cannot who cannot get on board with the things you are doing, right? Because we are all at different places and different levels in our life, I would say. So that's why um, I spoke to the committee and and like and and then they said like, okay, why don't we have maybe every every like three to four months we have a captain's meeting. So then we get so we tell the captain maybe a week before like this are what we are we are going to talk about. And then get back to us about it at the meeting, and then we take in all all the input, and then we see, and then and then we gotta filter it from there. So, kind of like balancing out between listening to the people, but at the same time doing what you have to do. Yeah. So I think that's how I kind of I try to balance things out. Like, might not be the best, but that's how I saw in terms of balancing things out. Like. I see. I think from the sorry, Charan, just to add, go ahead, go ahead. I I agree. Uh, is what Daryl said because there needs to be a balance. And when it comes to MAFA, uh, I think you guys would also uh, agree with this. People who are involved in this community, uh, you know, when you play a sport which is not entirely familiar uh, in this region, you join it out of passion. You because like like Cham has been playing for a long time, and there are other players who have been playing. I think like up to 10 years that there are players who played that long. And I've been here for, for uh, just a few years and I can sense that, that passion among people in the community. So that is one way. Uh, we are lucky because people who are in the community right now is passionate about it. And we hope to continue growing this uh, passionate people in, in, in our community. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, I agree with with um, the both of you in terms of having that balance. I think the biggest challenge is when you run it as a business, especially for a business, you have targets and expectation. And uh, the challenge balancing that is the, the committee are all volunteers, including yourself. Um, I think MAFA has not reached uh, at a point where we can give out salary. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I think the people we can go makan buffet lah maybe <laughs> uh, the Mandarin Oriental is kind of pushing it but <laughs> don't ask for more lah don't ask for more lah <laughs> on a good year maybe we can if not we just go for some steamboat buffet yeah <laughs> <laughs> correct <laughs> the Mandarin as a dessert later lah okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Sorry, so, that, that is the, 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 the balance because you want to run it like a business so that the, the, the association can sustain. But at the same time, you, you're not pushing uh, the community like workers you know, because they are volunteer. Um, you know, and, and this is a very thin line because the moment you treat them like your, your workers uh, rather than your team members, uh, now it's going to be an issue of, of performance. All they have to do is, I don't want to do it. You're on your own. You figure it out. That, that's all. And we really can't do anything um, and until they come to a point where they say, well, uh, this is not for me. I, I want to resign. So, so it's very difficult to move the the organization 100% like a business. So you kind of like, you need to make money to sustain, but at the same time, you you want to make sure that everybody is um, with the same heart as the as association, um, you know, because everybody's there, it, it's putting in their time, their effort, their thoughts, uh, solely because of heart, because it's either, you know, they, they really like the community, or they really love the sport, uh, or they just you know like to be part of an organization, um, but it's still free. Um, you know, even if we 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 have our our dulu our normal uh, meeting monthly meetings at the famous uh, ANW. I'm not sure if the ANW is still there or not. <laughs> <laughs> the cut <Cup> PG, <laughs> but that seems to be the meeting ground, and we change location based on you know. Um, to make sure that everybody can reach at the same time. Everybody is working and then they come with their office attire, they spend their own money to makan and then we have a, our, our discussion, at least a minimum of two hours. Uh, you know, anything beyond that, it, we, depending if there's a tournament coming up, oh my God, so many things to talk about. So there's really a lot, a lot of things. Uh, that you need to put in. I think that is the, the hardest thing. And when you put all these people together, uh, you want to make money at the same time. Great, thank you guys for your, for your, your questions and your feedback. Um, now we're gonna go into something that it's a little bit, I don't know, maybe a little bit um, uh, something for Shah to look forward to. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Sometimes, laughs> Daryl and I have experienced. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, uh, yes. let's talk about the let's talk about the committee members um mm -hmm. you know uh, and this and you know but to to be honest with you uh we i think we started with a committee of 11 people if i'm not mistaken um and this 11 people at least this is where we start off with and uh, we had committee and subcommittees and we had people who were committed at the beginning and I cannot blame them what happened in the middle because at the end, we basically ended up with like half who are able to commit uh, fully. Um, before I continue, I would like to welcome for those who just came in. Thank you so much for your time. Um, welcome to the uh, unique uh, funny experience of opportunity of getting three presidents at the same time and basically sharing our experience in running uh, MAFA, the uh, association, uh, and as well as uh, where it's going to go in the future. So right now, we are on the topic of, of managing our own uh, committee. Um, it is, it's very uh, crucial that the motivation continues. And, and I, on my part is, is to make sure that you know, all these 11 people stay sane and while still giving their, their effort. Um, uh, and I know along the way, people's commitment changed. So it could be, you know, they had to move um, and they're unable to contribute. So these are some of the things that was expected and may possibly happen. Uh, some will need to, you know, shift their priority. Uh, some just started their own business. So a lot of things was happening at the same time. So this is something that, uh, we, or at least I needed to, to manage and to make sure that uh, everybody is at par. Uh, and we wanted to create an environment where if you need help, ask for help. Um, if you um, 
if you are okay with everything and you know without voicing out that you you sh you should you should voice out don't just take everything you know now you become one man show and uh, I, I think running an association association can never be a one man show a one woman show one person show um, and actually Daryl and I have seen this not in Malaysia um, or, also, not only in Malaysia, there's also other parts of the world where you only have one president and one person running the show. And it is, and every like couple of years we went back and it's the same person. So I'm not too sure if that is healthy or for that person's heart or <laughs> thing. But, you know, it, it is, it's like we, we want to develop something um, that may work and you know people move from there so the idea is to move up uh, rather than you know restarting the ball all over again so sustaining the 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 committee is always have always been a challenge uh, at least from my side uh, but uh, the show still must go on and sometimes the committee change also along the way halfway somebody else who is committed and want to contribute their time uh, comes in as well uh daryl do you want to share your two-year experience um i think for me i would say i was very fortunate um and maybe lucky i would say that i had like a really 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 good bunch of people in my in, in my committee um, i think we had like maybe two dropouts along the way but we added like so we started with nine people two dropped out and then okay. we and then we ended up with twelve. So there is seven. We added five people. Right? Yeah, we added five people. Okay. In the yeah, in the second year. And I think like so, I really got to give like hats off to the committee members. From um yeah, I like they were they were with me. Um, Zoe Henry Cha uh, Champ like, and Zoe Henry Hyman. <laughs> yeah, Champ Champ was actually the the sleeping committee member that I call like every week and be like, hey, Chum, you know, this, 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 and so, yeah. So we had, and I had boy. Special advisor. Yeah, yeah special <laughs> advisor, right? Yeah, so I had boy, um, Kyle, Timo, um, uh, Sherman, Zoe, then Mike joined in, Krish, Howard, Ellie, Amy, they joined in the, the second year. And you better not leave a name, ah. Huh? Uh, better, yeah. I, I, that's why I'm, just like, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm like, yes. I think I, I think I got everybody. Yeah, and um, and I would say that these people, for some weird reason, they share my passion to really go to sport. And I, and I say especially like my my vice president, who is now your vice president, Shah Zoe. She, if I don't get anything done, she will hound me. Like there was a time when I went for my for my operation for for my ankle. And I was in bed and she's like, I don't care. We need to get Rose Bowl done. So she and Henry came to my house. They came to my room. I couldn't get out of the bed. They're like, we're going to sit here now. We're going to figure it out. I don't care. Like, you know, so, so I mean like that. And I think everyone in that committee shared that passion to really grow the sport. And I think we, we put it out there for these two years. We are, we are just going to grow the sport in numbers. We want to grow our social media. We're going to grow the sport numbers. Ayman was fantastic in, ma in managing the budget. Mm. That we made, that we made enough money to cover for a lot of other things and to and to use it as marketing, and now we've given that to Shah and hopefully Shah will grow it even more. Then maybe he can go to okay. Mandarin Oriental for buffet. No, we'll see, <laughs> yeah. right? That's where we cut lah. <laughs> that, yeah, I mean, and I think that whenever it was a little bit too much for for someone, I I I, I always say like, let me know. You know, if, if if you have a business, if, if you need to take time off, if, you, if you're busy on a day, just let me know. And someone else will step in. And the good thing about the committee that I had is that everybody is, everybody was always willing to step in and help. Like, like if someone cannot do it, someone else would be like, it's okay, I will, I will take this guy's job. Um, I would say maybe because we dedicated our life for that two years to football. Also, a lot of people on the list are single, I think. Maybe that's why. Uh, <laughs> so Shah picks single committee members, okay? <laughs> Tell them two years, work then can find partner right. after that. <laughs> Apparently it works. So Apparently it works. Yeah, but I mean, I would, I, would, I would say that I really, really thank my committee members for having the same goal and the same vision and the same drive. Um, and maybe some days even more than me to make sure that 
all of us get that together to to get all of this together. And I think we accomplished quite a bit in that one and a half. I mean, COVID happened, so we got one and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know what? That that is so vital, um, especially where you you really see the appreciation of how the committee works as like as a unit. Um, uh, the president is not motivated hundred percent of the time. You know, uh, uh, presidents uh, of the in <laughs> presidents do get tired, but you 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 uh, and also presidents. Um, there's nothing wrong with asking for help, um, and I think the commu- the community is big enough that you can you can ask for help, um, and I think that that is really the value behind an association uh, is really about the people. And sometimes you have expertise out there who may assist you even even greater, um, and especially now. Uh, I remember telling Daryl, um, I can't I. I I can't exactly remember when, but this is some time ago, where it, it was at a point where, you know, where we started, we know everybody, we know everybody's name, we know who they are, who they play for, but it had come, come to a point where I don't know these people anymore. So it's a good sign because it's not a sign of old age, by the way. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Still a good sign though. <laughs> Is a, it's a sign that the community has grown. The sport has grown. Um, there are new faces. And really, that's what we want. Uh, and that's what the, the, that's what the association should be, uh, any association. Um, you know, because we can only do so much. I can only have so much ideas. Daryl can have only so much ideas. And then we want, uh, you know, our expectation to is to at least see it grow to a level that we have not never gone before. I mean, Daryl has done that. Uh, Daryl has taken the association to a level that um, I did not bring to. I could not possibly bring to. So, uh, no, no pressure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I would say, I would say, Champ is not is not only me, but I would say I like I would thank my team yeah. for it because. Um, I I really I would I really really thank um, especially like because the my main focus for for the two years was how can we grow our social media presence um, and how can we reach out to more people and I would say Zoe and Henry and 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 uh, and Amy like Henry and Amy like like if I said oh I needed a poster to post on social media they would have they would have it yesterday. You right. know, like, you know, this is like, it's like on, on, and Zoe would know what to do. So, like, you know, like, and like, we grew it in terms of video. Like, you know, if we had to stand there and take video, which I did sometimes, but Zoe scolded me because I realized that I don't have very good video hands. And, or she realized, and then she told me, like, stop taking videos, just go and be a ref. Okay, like, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, we all chipped in, did wherever, however we could um, to make this, this thing. Like. So, I mean, to take it so like 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 how you say like you know take it to another level, you know I think it's very important that yeah there are committee members who are going to not perform and there are committee members who are going to kind of drop out, but there are also going to be those exceptional committee members who would push and ride that wave with you to make to basically bring it to where sometimes you even you feel like, damn I didn't know we we could get to, to this point. Mm-hmm. You know, and and uh, I would say I was lucky that majority of my committee members, or at the end of the day, the ones who stayed to the end, are all like that. So yeah, I so, think all like the best, uh, <laughs> <laughs> No pressure, by the way. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> I think like uh, we have uh, stressed quite a few times where uh, one of the biggest strengths of of people who are involved in in our community in the committee. Uh, they are passionate about the sport. So I think that's why you guys have such a, a good mixture of team to, to, to start the uh, MAFA back then and then continue uh, growing it until your time. And I cannot speak much about my uh, uh, team right now because we just, uh, just recently started, but I wholeheartedly believe uh, on this team these teams, uh, all the team members, because uh, like I said, 
the people who are involved i believe they continuously when you you know when you continuously playing the sport you basically are showing how much passionate you are and to step up like all our community members are volunteers to to step up and 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 contribute something that that shows a lot and and i also agree on what you guys said that you you cannot nobody can run the show alone right uh, you always need a, a good uh, support and from my time before i stepped in as president of uh, mafa i was president for rentap uh, the one of the new clubs can consider new lah got few years and where we started in 2019 and last year we we uh, we started with a quite a bang and we try to like uh, achieve our goals and that is not something which i myself do alone we uh, everyone in the team involved and every everyone in the team wants to to have the best for the team and i believe even for mafa in in mafa community everybody wants the same thing so i don't think it would be different uh, this time around excellent uh, uh, so audio okay you guys hear me okay good okay good sorry sorry there was some feedback earlier so i think i want um I, I hope what we have been sharing is is um, at least helpful for for those who are listening, especially those who are within an organization or within an association or planning to start an association. Um, you know, these are some of the fun stuff that's going to happen, and you know, um, it, people always um, talk about funds. Uh, you know, how how to how to fund an association, um, and either be a sport association or professional association uh, we all have the same issue you need funds to run it uh, and you need funds to to ensure that, to sustain the the association you know like even simple things like uh, posters and running an event all those you need money to to make sure everything is up to par and you know fully organized um, and uh, I, i've actually Uh, I was blessed <laughs> being invited to uh, one of the um, uh, KBS punya event. Uh, KBS event. event uh, I went there with Daryl, and um, we were just sitting there and we were just listening to all the other associations. Associations. There were like I don't, I can't remember. There was uh, about five rooms, and there was at least thirty associations per room. Um, and it is, and that session was about um, how to how to uh, work together with KBS um, and addressing certain issues. Um, surprisingly enough, uh, I would say about 90% of the questions there was about when is the government going to give association money. We need money to do events, and then <laughs> KBS is like, "Why do we? Why should we give you money?" <laughs> you know. Um, so, and I was like looking at Daryl, like, actually, we're not doing so. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have a lot of money, but we we had a little bit of money that at least we could run. You know our own our own events. We we could rent our own field. We could pay our own referees. Um, we even had our own toilet. Uh, you know? That's an achievement, though. <laughs> so that's a real achievement. So I, I think the uh, at least from how we started the the association was, we I, I think we went with the attitude of we could run this ourselves. Um, and we went with the attitude that this is uh, a community, and and believe it or not, the the community actually reached out, and you know they paid membership. People are very enthusiastic about membership. Uh, it came to a point where everybody is very keen about uh, wanting to make sure that their voices are heard. 
um, and people play, play a very big role in terms of contributing ideas um, uh, with, the, uh, with the association. So I think that was the biggest thing. And, and from there, we just had to make sure that we ran events that you know, basically had some funds uh, packed uh, for the association to run uh, throughout the year or when we planned for two years. So of course, that was without all the Mandarin buffet dinner. We, we, we did not have that. The only time where the association paid for our meal was in the tournament. That's because we are not allowed to leave the field. <laughs> we are there. Yeah. So that was the luxury. Now, now that's guys, pagi makan pagi lah. <laughs> I mean, I think I think the same for me is that I think the only time that that the that the association ever paid for for any meal was during Fantasy Cup. I think you know when like, we all had the field. Like, yeah, that's it. Like, yeah. Yeah, so we, I'm I'm not gonna put that as one of my my uh, target lah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, I I think uh, as a general, and I think that's what that's what uh, how uh, Daryl was running the association as well. Um, uh, is basically the association grew organically, um, and and with the funds that was left for the next association is actually. When I shared with some of uh, my friends who ran other association, and surprisingly, this this is their response. Wait, that's a lot. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? <laughs> so, so that gives me an indication that you know people kind of have to start all over again. And I, I think what is important that <laughs> although we had our fun uh, in, in using the facilities but you're ensuring for the next one to roll um, a lot more better, a lot better than what, how you've been rolling with the yeah. funds as well. So I think that that is very crucial to start off with the mindset of, of uh, you know, we could grow this ourselves and grow this organically. Um, but that was my portion. And I, I remember uh, when Daryl was the president, uh, he managed to get a lot of uh, sponsorship. And I think, that was really good. Um, uh, you know, it really helped in terms of uh, growing the, you know, the interest and, you know, it, 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 I think at one point, oh yeah, yeah, you, during my time, uh, when you win a tournament, you just get trophy and medal. No. Right? <laughs> okay, now, now that's playing for passion, right? Yeah, that was for passion. <laughs> Well, Daryl had turned that around where, where it has become competitive that if you win, you actually win money. And I mean, I, I felt that it, you know, it's just amazing. How, how can you do that? And such a young association where you, you get money. I mean, yeah, like you can get sponsors, they give you jersey, like, give you flag, like, right? But winning money was like a different level, you know? It becomes like, a professional sport. It becomes, um, you know, something that people really look forward to, um, rather than just menang trophy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think, I think funds is a very big thing, and I'll say like number one, um, I had Ayman. Ayman, he said like, so I told him like, okay, dude, this is what this is what we need. This is how much I think we are going to spend, and because. Um, we were actually gearing up to host a Southeast, Southeast Asian Cup um, at the end of 2020. But um, COVID happened, so all of that got like, postponed. But, and then after doing the whole budgeting at the start of like 2019, we realized that we, we would need at least about 40,000 to basically run it comfortably. Right. And so, Ayman and I sat down um, and, and we were like, okay, how can we make, how, how can we earn this 40,000 basically in the in span of two years? So that's about 20 grand a year, which is a lot of money for MAFA because that's basically, I would say, quadrupling the amount that was left, I would say. <laughs> yeah, so basically like with the amount that's left, we had to times three so that we have at least 40,000 so that we can run it. And at the end of it, 
we might not have any more balance for the next president or so. <laughs> <laughs> so I and I were thinking like, how can we do that? And so I would say that I really thank him because he figured out how to do certain things, how to how to basically shift things around, how to make money, small, small bits and pieces here and there. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the day, it will all accumulate together. And then we had the other guys in the team like Kyle and, and Zoe and Henry and Timo and all who basically said, okay, let's market things at different, different ways. And then we can bring in more people. With more people, we have more membership, sell more jerseys, we have more, more teams for tournaments. Then we can get more money from there. And all this money basically goes back towards the players. That's why, you know, we had like the awards night, which is something that I really yeah. felt like, you know, players gave so much throughout the year, not only in terms of like money, but their time, their commitment. Mm -hmm. How can we as MAFA award that? How how can we acknowledge that? You know, um, never got a chance to do this year, this, I mean, sorry, the 2020. I've always wanted to do like a, like a Hall of Fame thing. You know, it would have been uh, nice to be part of like of like the, the awards night. Um, but yeah, how can MAFA give back? So I think I feel like like going back even as like as for like leadership and even as a president, you the the thought is not how much can I take from these people, but how much can I give back to these people? Because when you start giving back, people see that people see and people acknowledge that, you know. Or this person, or this this committee, or this community, or this community is giving so much to the community, then the community in turn will say, "How can I give back to help the committee?" And then it's just a cycle that just snowballs and grows. And I think that's where we are today. Like you know, we we say, "How can we give back?" We know that we want to go international, but we can't. So we said, "Okay, Mafa will fork out money to bring uh, international teams down for for the Rose Bowl." You know, so we 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 paid here and there stuff for that. But took it up out of our marketing budget. But because of that, now we've got so many girls playing because they saw that Mafa is willing to invest in them. You know, and therefore they are willing to invest their time and their to into Mafa too. So they get their friends to come in, they, they get they they get you know more and more people coming in. So I think that's how that's how we grow the funds actually. By spending more on people, people will be more willing to spend more on, on us. True, yeah. true. Yeah, and in terms of sponsorship, I would say um, we all pulled in whatever context we are here and there, whatever expertise we have. And we might not have been able to get money for sponsors, but we've got a lot of items. We got Puma as one of our sponsors, right? And 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 we got Puma shoes and stuff like that. And people saw, wow, Mafa is giving back. Mafa is giving back to me. So why don't, you know, we see like Mafa is doing the awards night, Mafa is doing the all-star game, Mafa is giving us jerseys, Mafa is giving us all of this. How can we give back? And then, the, and then the the community is willing to help. The community is willing to, okay, maybe this this tournament is like a little bit more. I gotta pay extra fifty bucks. It's okay, because I know at the end of the day, if I pay this extra fifty bucks, and if I make um difference in this league, I could win a trophy as MVP, or you know I could be in in the All Star team and get one of those All Star jerseys. You know things like that. So I think those are the things that I felt was a way to market to grow the funds. I invest in the people, and then the people that invested back in Mafa. I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know. You know. Uh, this could be like a secret among associations, but Mafa is one of the cheapest. <laughs> has one of the cheapest membership fees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I've heard like other associations around, and, and some of uh, you know, maybe sometimes it makes sense because of the equipment. But what is good about flag football is we don't really need a lot of equipment, <laughs> it's quite simple actually. And hey, you know what? The flag is provided by the association. Wow, <laughs> how great is that! So, join. Uh, even if you can get them, it's, it's not going to cost you so much. <laughs> Um, okay, so we have come to, we got about 10 more minutes, so um, uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to open to any question. Uh, Ellie, hi, welcome. Uh, Mr. Sean, welcome, welcome. 
mana tadi there's a few more guys here so if you guys have any question you can unmute you can ask the questions or if you want to share it in the chat you can type it in the chat uh, you can ask any one of us um, and we will see if we could uh, if the question is related to um, you know the current or the previous or the future um, and see how we can answer your questions if you have any questions at all um, if not then we can continue moment I mean <laughs> There's just so so much for, for us to uh, really share. Um, I mean, if you look at how how uh, Daryl and Shah have been talking about, you know, really uh, joining in the community, and it's just amazing. You, you see a, a group of people just just joining in. Some have absolutely no idea what this flag football is. Uh, for those who are curious about flag football, um, it is like American football, a little bit like American football-ish rules, uh, but without the tackling. So it is perfectly safe. Uh, many years ago, uh, before MAFA, it was played only by men, at least that we know of in Malaysia. Um, but when MAFA started, we were very much influenced by how the Philippines ran their association. They had a lot of uh, ladies involved and we thought, wow, that, that is great. Um, and that is also to show that this sport is, is safe for, for everybody to play. And, uh, and we got that ball rolling. We got ladies to, to joining, uh, join in and, um, and teams became co-ed and we played with both male and female. And, and then now we are moving to, you know, you can see like an evolution of growth, um, how the sport is, is evolving to now separating because we have a lot of women um, who, who are very committed to play. And, you know, we, now we can separate the men and the women um, team. Mm -hmm. And that growth is, is tremendous. Um, it, it's amazing to see uh, these ladies uh, play and they are so committed oh my god and uh, I, I and to be honest with you i get scared every time i have to rep for them <laughs> yeah because i think they are, they are more gunners than the guys as well i'm just a whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm, down, calm down calm down calm <laughs> down i think for to explain flag football i always use the the analogy like imagine fo soccer football but uh, they have if they have like full side and then they have futsal, so that's basically flat football is to to read iron football. Uh, that that's uh, it's more compact, it's faster and it's safer for for everyone. Yeah, we're all have a little city here. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. What is cool about the sport is it, <clears throat> it it you don't have to be fast, you don't have to be super fit. Um, you don't have to be fit, period. You don't. You you don't have to be tall. You don't have to be the person who jumps the highest. And I, I feel like football is always a game of intellect. Um, you, you know, there's a lot of strategy that goes along with it. Um, uh, there's a lot of planning. Every team member plays a role for one thing to happen, uh, and everybody has a job. And when everybody does it well. Um, that's when you see the play develops, right? That's like the, the beauty. You know, when you sit in there, you're like, wow. <laughs> you know, one play can fool everybody, can fool the defense, can you? And, and that, that is really what the sport is about. That's really cool. I mean, Coming from the MVP himself, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you see, Ali said, Chum is fit and intellectual. So Chum is basically just talking about himself. La. <laughs> I see oh, no yeah. lie there. <laughs> yeah, but really, I feel like like um, flag football or like American football is a very different sport from a lot of the sports that, that, that I grew up watching or playing. And it's because I think, especially like now me, at, like I'm not the, like I see in the field, right? Like, you know, I'm not the fittest. I'm not the fastest. Actually, no, I'm just, the, I'm the slowest and the most unfittest, like let's put it that way. <laughs> right? and, then, and then we have Cham who is, you know, like 18 at heart and legs. But on the hair, maybe not so much. But you know, like, like but nobody knows how nobody yeah. knows how old exactly he is. Yeah, <laughs> nobody knows. Nobody knows. But he goes on the field and he dominates this 
18, 21 year olds, and he just makes them look like they are the 40 year olds, you know, like, you know, and he just <laughs> running circles around them. And it's the mind, like really it's the mind. I, whenever people ask me, what, how do you see flag football or how do you see American football? I always say that I feel like it's like chess, mm. but with, but with people. Yeah. Right. So how can yeah. you outsmart your, your opponent? Yes, everyone has their own set of skills, you know, like even a pawn, the pawn cannot move as much as a queen. Yeah. You know, but a pawn is still as useful, if not more useful at, 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 at certain times. You know, and I think that's what football is. You have your big guys, you have your small guys, you know, you have you have your fast guys, you have your not so fast guys, you know, like all, all of this adds up. And if you can scheme well enough and out scheme your opponent, right? I think that's when the beauty of football happens. Yeah, I would, I would say that for me, that's why I'm so drawn to football and why I love football so much is not because it's not about how well one player can play and not about how fit you have to be and stuff like that. Yet you do have to be fit because if you play a two-day tournament and not fit, all the best. Uh, <laughs> right? But it's not only about that. It's about it's, it's about the mind. It's mostly yeah. about the mind. Yeah, I think okay. really is a question. Thank you, thank you so much, Derek, for sharing that. And and you guys are. Uh, 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 we have a few more questions. We have a question from Peter. Uh, Shah, this is addressing to you. If you uh, don't mind sharing what's happening so far, and if there's any plans um, for the future. Uh, yes. I think for, for this season, uh, as we know, we have only restarted sports sector, uh, just coming off the, the recent MCO. Uh, we will restart the whole, uh, whole new season. Obviously, when we start at the start of the year, uh, we have our set of calendar, set of program running from January until the end of the year. But after everything that, that we have been through, we have to readjust. And the plan is to kick off the the uh, season uh, as as uh, early as we can because I believe uh, players are uh, really into coming back to the pitch to play. But at the same time, we also need to be be careful on on the fitness level because when when you haven't been playing like consistently and. Uh, during during the MCO and then you want to start you cannot jump straight ahead to action so so yeah we're trying to streamline all our activities upcoming for the upcoming season and we will have uh, an announcement in in like as early as next week it should be okay thank you thank you uh, the, uh, another question uh, how to encourage team with smaller number of player to be more present during AGM, and not only talking about teams reps on the committee, but equal representation of team for high committee positions too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think, yeah, we, we uh, so far we have a good number of, of uh, people in, in, in the uh, MAFA community uh, in, in a very, we, actually growing steadily in the past few years. And I think this year should be a record number of, of new members. And I agree when when MAFA uh, held the, the AGM, the, the problem that we, we always uh, come up with is, sorry, come against is uh, players are not attending uh, the AGM. So, there is there's always going to be a certain decision that uh, was made without your, your knowledge uh, based on the AGM. That, that's, you know, something that you cannot avoid. So we, we still hoping that uh, all teams can be more uh, participating, can be more active in recruitment. So, and, you know, to have more representation in, in MAFA community and MAFA uh, AGM. So uh, that's where we are trying to diversify also our, our, the people that are involved in the committee because right now we are using the, the same uh, formula from the last uh, committee where we are having all teams 
to be to be part of the committee so there should be more uh, enhanced communication between uh, mafa committee and all clubs so in terms of communication that is one of the the aspect that we need to improve in in, in the future great uh, uh, one more question. Um, will MAFA consider hosting official development program for the communities such as uh, QB camps um, and flag football focus programs uh, of that sort? Uh, absolutely. This, this is uh, one of the ideas that has been thrown around because uh, from the past, uh, from previous experience, we have people who uh, so sort of we can consider specialists in, in certain position, in certain aspect. We have, uh, like we said, people in our community is very diverse. We have uh, fitness instructors. We have people from uh, all different, all walks of professional life. So I think to hold a specific uh, training camps would be a great idea. Uh, to to be considered, but however, we still uh, need to uh, make sure that the the this idea are streamlined in accordance with the the calendar that we are planning. Because right now, if we are starting in in now is end of March, and then next month Kwasa, and then after Raya, we don't really have that that uh, enough window to hold all our our traditional. Uh, yeah. Tournaments that we have because right now uh, one of I have to also mention that one of the ambition that we have is to to uh, make use uh, to commercialize more on our sports asset that we have. We have uh, Mafa League and now and then there will be there are talks about the upcoming uh, women's league, the inaugural women's league this year. It's still going on, so especially since that window and not it's not that much so. We, we still have to, to consider whether we have time for all tournaments, but if, are we considering it? Yeah, of, of course, we are uh, making it part of our plans in the future. I think one of the most uh, upcoming event we uh, MAFA could do is the Buka Puasa Bowl. <laughs> Trump, I think we've tried the Buka Puasa thing many times. Um, it has, we have never succeeded in it. <laughs> Except the I first time, you the didn't first make time, it a tournament. The first time when we had it near your house, lah, the steamboat <laughs> one. That is the only time I think we actually succeeded in getting like a lot of people. After yeah, that, I think we had about forty people that joined that session. That joined the session. After yeah. that, they just book up also is not a thing, ah. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's so, not as competitive, lah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not competitive. Yeah. I let you know we have like uh, football shape sushi. Uh, unless unless we change the the book up poster the book up poster session to a who can eat more session. Yeah. Uh, then maybe. You know. <laughs> then the restaurant will go bankrupt. <laughs> All right, guys. So um, we have come to the uh, as we promised. Uh, it's nine or two. We're two minutes, uh, three minutes now behind. Uh, uh, taking a little bit more time. But I would like to thank the both of you, uh, Daryl and Shah, for, for joining me tonight. And, um, and I would like to also thank everybody for asking these questions. I think this, this has, uh, these questions are valuable and, um, and we can see that people are very much committed and want to see the association grow. Um, so one last bit before we end the session, uh, I would like to invite Shah to inform our viewers where can they find MAFA uh, if they want to learn a little bit more about MAFA or flag football, where can they find MAFA? Uh, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to on behalf of MAFA, to thank uh, Chum and Team Accordia for this opportunity, this opportunity. And I think it's a good discourse for uh, the benefit of our sport. And to those who are watching, uh, if you are if you are trying to find flat football in Malaysia, you can go straight away on Instagram. We are active on Instagram, uh, flat football underscore Malaysia. And then other than our main uh, account, uh, our MAFA account, we also have clubs who are active on social media. So if you are interested, just reach out to those clubs. I believe they are more than happy to, to have you join them. 
Great. Great. <laughs> I think we have one comment. Will Shah be inspired by Daryl's fitness journey once he stepped down as president later too? I, <laughs> I've already stepped down as president. <laughs> <laughs> this is no joke. No. I think like me taking this role is like we and, and Daryl, like if you look at Daryl now, he, he looks amazing. So I think I can see my future after I step down. Thank, thanks, Ellie, just, for, for just, that. just so you know, Shah. <laughs> that before I became Mafia president, I had no grey hair. And now I have to tie my hair so that the black hair hides the grey hair. Just letting you know first. Chum had a full head of hair. And now basically, you know lah. Uh, no hair. <laughs> Regardless, I think it's to still totally worth it lah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah. I think, yeah, I think, um, like, for me, I would say, uh, I'd like to wish Shah and the next committee, um, I wouldn't say all the best. Right? All the best sounds 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 a bit a bit bad, yeah. but, right? But I, I wish you all the best. I would say, you know, it's it's going to be um, there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be trial, uh, like like hard times. And but for me, I I know I, I knew that during the hard times, I could call Chum, and Chum was always the voice of reason, and he could kind of like help me put things into per perspective, lah. You know, and um, he's always been there for football, even before Mafa. And at one point of time, football kind of, flat football kind of died down a bit. And without Chum, we wouldn't be where we are today. He he made sure that he got a bunch of people to continue running it, you know? And, and even if it wasn't a, a committee per se, it was a group of leaders who just organized tournaments and tried their best to keep football afloat to, yeah. to a point where we could become official and, and, and legitimate. To where we are today. So I would say a big thanks to Chum um, or Zyro too for, for basically keeping flag football alive in Malaysia. Um, and because and if not because of that, we wouldn't be where we are today. We wouldn't have the hundreds of members that we have. We, we wouldn't have the teams. We wouldn't be able to go international. We wouldn't be doing a lot of this. So on behalf of Flag football in Malaysia, since Shah said that in from on behalf of Mafa, I'll say on behalf of the sport in Malaysia, I'll, I'd like to thank Cham for, for, for all his efforts and all the hair he's put in to make sure that you know this this sport stays alive and keeps and keep and keeps the flow. And I think this is a bit this is his baby that he has passed on to me and now passed on to Shah. Right? Um, hopefully we get to see the stadium soon. <laughs> Cham has always wanted a stadium. Okay. So hopefully we get to see the stadium. Yeah. Um, I know that for me, one thing that I, I always wanted to do in my term, but sadly because of COVID, we couldn't is I've always wanted Chum to have his name at the back of a official flag football Malaysia jersey. Absolutely. That's sanctioned we... by KBS and we actually travel and say we are actually Team Malaysia. <laughs> Yeah, right? yeah. And I'm I not gonna let I, that dream die down though. Yeah, so, so he still got a few more years in him. <laughs> so he still got a few more years in him. So Shah, you know, I think I passed a bit the the, the I think, I think to you. taking over taking over this role from, from you guys. I think what I'm doing, what I'm gonna do is to emulate what you guys have done and some. You know, uh, we are trying to continue to grow the sport and and I we also share uh like some of the same uh, faces in the committee, like Zoe, she has been like crucial to uh, to Mafa, and you know during your times, and I'm sure she will uh, continue doing uh, what she loves, and we are really grateful. I'm really grateful to have her part of the team, and and uh, we will uh, continue to work together for for the sport. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. Uh, it's been such a pleasure and, uh, you know, uh, I enjoy working with you guys and I, I think this will never end uh, as, yeah. long as, <laughs> as long as I, I think when you keep the community going, you keep, keep um, the association going, uh, you guys are going to do wonders. So uh, keep this up and uh, we will see you this weekend. <laughs>
Yeah, see you on the field. See you, man. See you on the field. See you on the field. So thank you everybody for joining. Uh, again, if you are looking for uh, interested to check out what Mafa is doing, check out Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and uh, you just Google Flight Football Malaysia or Mafa, you will find us. Uh, we are everywhere. So join us. And um, thank you so much. Have a pleasant evening.